السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن أصحاب الجنة اليوم في شغل فاكهون هم وأزواجهم في ظلال على الأرائك متكئون لهم فيها فاكهة ولهم ما يدعون سلام قولا من رب الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وعلى من استنى بسنته واهتدى بهديه وسار على نهجه إلى يوم الدين At this time of year in September just before the month before in August, it's the time of year in which everybody is looking at others going on holiday. Some to the Mediterranean, some to the south of Spain, to different parts of the world. People are craving and wanting and searching to fly, to go away, get away from the troubles and the pains and the tiresome day-to-day -day life that they have. You're scrolling on the internet and you come across an advertisement. You see a picture of a beach with clean yellow sand, water, ocean as far as the eye can see. And you begin to salivate, thinking about the tropical juices and the enjoyment that you can have. And all of this, you're willing to spend thousands of pounds for, just for seven days, for 10 days, for 12 days. And you know that when you get there, the beach is going to be overcrowded. And you know that the food there is not going to be halal, so you're going to be eating vegetarian burgers for nine days. And you know when you get there that there's going to be so many things that you're not happy about. And yet even that little enjoyment of getting away from it all is something all of us can relate to. And today we're going to discuss, in a brief reminder, the ultimate escape, the ultimate vacation. That beach which has no shore, and that sea which has no impurity. And that is the destination that we all wait for and that we are longing for, the destination of Jannah. May Allah make all of us from that. Before Jannah, every human being crosses the Sirat. Who can tell me what is the Sirat? Mm -hmm. It's a bridge. It's not tiny, but it's thin. It's a very thin bridge. Sharper than a sword and thinner than a hair and everyone will cross. And what will happen to those who cannot cross? They fall down into Jahannam. May Allah protect us from that. And those that cross to the other side, what will be awaiting them? Jannah. But specifically, those that cross to the other side will see something or somebody that they have been waiting to see their whole life. As al qah Qa ibn Aws was asked, describe to us Jannah. He said, Fiha Rasulullah. In it is the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is the first thing to look forward for. The man that we have been longing to meet for a very long time. The man who was described to us. His features, his face was described to us. The way he walked was described to us. And we wish we could see him, and he's waiting on the other side of the bridge. And he's waiting with al hawd What is the hawd Who can tell me what is the hawd al kawthar What's referred to in the Quran as al kawthar What is it? A swimming pool? No. Water? Water? Uh, uh, uh -huh. It's like a river. river. al hawd In English they translate it to mean a pond. 
But when you think of a pond, you think of a very small body of water with frogs in it. That's not what Al-Hawl is. The Prophet وسلم, in the Sahih Hadith describes the size of Al-Hawd as between Mecca and Yemen. Not a small pond. And you have this huge ocean and you have vessels to drink from. And these vessels, the Prophet وسلم, says, Kilkawakib. They are like the stars in the sky. They are glittering. They are beautiful. And he says, whoever drinks from this pond لا بعده أبدا, will never feel thirsty again. You've just made this long journey on the Sirat. So tired. You have seen people fall into Jahannam. You have seen Jahannam. That itself is it's exhausting. Just to see Jahannam with your eyes is exhausting. And then you reach the other side and you see the Messenger. And now your eyes are feeling very cool. And then you drink from the Hawd. A drink after which you will never feel thirsty again. And this is only the beginning. And then you enter Jannah. And as we enter Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recreates us from scratch. As the scholars say, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rebuilds the human being, every single human being from scratch. To be the age of 33 years old, according to some ahadith. So you will not be as a woman came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked him that, is it possible for me to go to paradise? He said, unfortunately not. She began to cry. He said, because old women do not enter paradise. You will be young when you enter paradise. And so everybody will, re will be rebuilt from scratch. And as we enter then Jannah, there will be a tree. And this tree, the Prophet ﷺ says, Inna fil fil shajaratan. There is a tree in Jannah that if a rider were to ride, as fast as possible on a horse, it would take them a hundred years just to exit the shade of this tree. And by this tree, there will be rivers, Al-Anhar. And we will be dipped into these rivers. And when we are dipped into this river, it will remove all of the impurities in our physical body. The sweat, the muck, the slime, the smell will all be gone. Until our sweat, our sweat will become musk, perfume. And we will never urinate again. And we will never pass excrement again. Akramakumullah. And then we will drink from these anhar, from these rivers. And when one drinks from it, all of the dirt inside will be removed. That is the jealousy, the hatred, the rancor, the anger will be cleaned from our hearts. As Allah says in the Quran, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلْ إِخْوَانًا عَلَىٰ سُرُورٍ مُتَقَابِلِينَ We will remove everything in their hearts, every evil, negative feeling, we will remove it from their hearts. And نَزْعَ to, to yank it away from their hearts. And then they will be like brothers reclining on sofas, reclining on armchairs. This is exactly what you saw in the advertisement, the yellow beach and the armchair. That is how, inshallah, we will be. But we will be different. It will not be us. And before we begin to describe the rest of Jannah, there's an important point to remember. Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma says, the only thing in common between paradise and this world are the names of things. Everything else is different. So when I say fruit, the fruit of Jannah is not like the fruit of this world. When I say women, the women of paradise are not like the women of this world. When I say men, the men of paradise are not like the men of this world. When I say palace, the palace of paradise is not like the palace of this world. The names are the same, but the reality of those things are completely different. To the extent that the Prophet said, فِيهَا مَا لَا عَيْنٌ رَأَتْ وَلَا أُذُنٌ سَمِعَتْ وَلَا خَطَرَ عَلَىٰ قَلْبِ بَشَرْ That in paradise, there are things which no eye has seen, and no ear has heard of and has never even come across the mind of a human being. You cannot imagine. You cannot imagine what is in paradise. But the names are familiar to give you some sense of familiarity. You have to relate somehow. You need something to look forward to. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uses words that you are familiar with. But what is inside there is not something that we know. There is a suspense to it. It's like when someone in your family tells you that they are giving you a surprise gift today. Or they buy you a ticket 
but with black ink, they rub out the destination. You sit in the airplane, you still don't know where you're headed until the pilot begins the announcement. Flight number 4172, exit destination, then you know where you're going, and you feel so happy because the, you are waiting in suspense to find out. Jannah is the same. We know a little bit. We know the names. We know some details. But until we get there, we are going to be surprised what is there waiting for us. In Jannah, the believers will be in darajat, in different levels. Think of an apartment. Think of a building. The CEO, the chief executive officer, the prime minister, they have the penthouse, the top of the building. And the floor workers, the factory workers are at the bottom. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Everyone will have a degree, a status, depending on how they acted in this world. And they will get exactly what they deserve and they will not be reduced, they will not be oppressed in any way. But what are these darajat, these levels, and what do they look like? Are they like the floors of a building? Or are they like the economy and business class in an aeroplane? What are they like? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us in the hadith, Inna ahl al-jannati yatara'aun The people of Jannah will be looking at each other from the different levels that they are at. And between every level is the distance between here and the stars that you see. Today the physicists tell us that the stars that we see are hundreds of light years away. Light years, do you even know what is a light year? If light were to travel for one year, how far would it go? This is one light year. The stars in the sky are thousands of light years away. You cannot imagine the distance. And between each daraja, each level in paradise is this distance that you cannot even imagine. It's not in miles, it's not in kilometers, it's in something else entirely. And yet, every level of paradise, you will be able to hear the other levels of paradise. You will not feel lower, you will not feel belittled, you will not feel humiliated, as if you were on the ground floor of a building and you look at the vice president on the top of the building, you say, MashaAllah. You will not feel humiliated because you will be able to hear all the conversations in paradise. The walls are very thin, sound will travel. And you will be able to hear the conversations that are being had. In fact, the people of Jannah will be able to hear the people of Jahannam. In fact, the people of Jannah will be able to speak to the people of Jahannam. Who can remind me which ayah in the Quran Allah mentions? The people of Jannah calling out to the people of the fire. وَنَادَى أَصْحَابُ الْجَنَّةِ أَصْحَابَ النَّارِ the people of paradise will call to the people of the fire. That means they can see them, they can hear them. They will say to them, we found whatever Allah promised to be true. They will ask them, did you find what Allah promised you to be true? But then the communication between them will be blocked. Because even to speak to the people of Jahannam brings discomfort to the heart. And the people of Jahannam will beg the people of paradise, just give us some water. They will beg them. Please just drop some water. Some glucose aid from Jannah. A few drops. And the people of Jannah will say to them, Allah has made it haram for even a drop of water from paradise to reach you in Jahannam. That conversation will happen. But why? Why would Allah, if you have reached paradise, why would Allah make you see Jahannam? And see the suffering there? And see the pain there? Why would He do that? Who can tell me? then you can realize the blessings of Allah upon you in Jannah. And you can appreciate where you have reached. And in Jannah, what are the... We said there will be different levels of Jannah. 
And who will be, what is the top level of Jannah? Who can tell me? Al Firdaus. Al Firdaus al A'la. That is the name of the top level of Jannah. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa taught us, Ida sa'altumullaha fas'aluhu al Firdaus. If you are going to make dua for something, don't ask Allah for the ground floor of Jannah. Ask Him for the top floor of Jannah. Ask Him for Firdaus. Be ambitious. When it comes to the afterlife, try to be number one. When it comes to this life, we can be number two. But in the afterlife, nobody can beat us. That's why when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the afterlife, He says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغْفِرَةٍ مِّن رَبِّكُمْ Race for the forgiveness of Allah. But when He talks about this world, He says, فَمْشُوا فِي مَنَاكِبِهَا Walk in its valleys. You can walk in this world, but we have to race for the afterlife. See the difference in speed. You can cross the speed limit for the afterlife. But in this world, relax. This world is coming to an end. And so this is why we have to compete for the highest levels of Jannah. And the top of them is Firdaus. And why should we compete for Firdaus? Because in Firdaus, who lives in the top level of paradise? The Prophet ﷺ. And who are going to accompany the Messenger ﷺ in this top level of paradise? أُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّيقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسُنَ أُولَٰئِكَ رَفِيقًا In that top level of paradise will be the prophets and the siddiqeen, those who are truly committed to Allah, and the shuhada, those who died and lost their lives for the sake of Allah, and the salihin, the righteous people, which can be you and can be me. We can't be anbiya, we can't be prophets, but we can be siddiqeen. We can be committed people. We can be martyrs, we can die for the sake of Allah. May Allah grant all of us a shahada. And we can be salihin, we can be righteous people. And we can reach the levels of paradise where we are the neighbors of the messengers of Allah. Imagine that you leave your dwelling in paradise and your neighbor is Ibrahim alayhi salam. And imagine round the corner is Nuh alayhi salam. And imagine to his left is Musa alayhi salam. What conversations would you have with them? What questions would you ask them? What food would you eat and order from the restaurants of paradise as you relaxed with them? Would you not want that company? We all want that company. And then we have to fight for that company. Because that company does not come easily. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, حُفَّةِ الْجَنَّةُ بِالْمَكَارِهِ Paradise is surrounded by difficulty, by tests. It doesn't come easy. In all the modern movies that are famous today and the fictional books, if somebody wants to get to the treasure, if somebody wants to get to the gold, they have to fight the dragon. And similarly, and that's a child can understand this. But as adults, if we want to get the gold of paradise and the top penthouse of paradise, we have to fight for it as well and slay the dragons of our nafs and the shaitan and the temptations of this world. And so what will the believers be doing in paradise? What will the believers be enjoying in paradise? The first thing is that you can have whatever you want. Really, this is something that is hard to imagine. A thought crosses your mind. Sometimes you see somebody walk, driving a nice car and you think, you know what? If I was a millionaire, maybe. You see sometimes somebody eating in a very nice restaurant or some special food and you think, you know what? I would like to taste what he's eating or she's eating. In Jannah, when you think it appears, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِمْ They will have whatever. مَا الاستغراق Anything they want, it is with Allah, they will have it. And specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes a few incidents in paradise. Allah describes the believers sitting, reclining. In this world, there's no reclining. You can recline for seven days, for 14 days, for 21 days, but you have to get back to work. This world is about sweat and blood and tears. But when Allah describes the believers in Jannah, He says, مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ Relaxing, reclining on chairs. لا يرون فيها شمسا ولا زمهريرا They will not see heat in the afterlife. 
the British people will be very upset when they hear the first half of this ayah. Because the British are hungry for heat, vitamin D, we need sunlight. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wala zam harira, you will also not see extreme cold. So the British people get excited. No extreme heat and no extreme cold. It is perfect. The weather is perfect. You don't have to look at the forecast. You don't have to worry about rain or sun or snow. Whatever it is, the weather there is perfect. And the food of Jannah. Allah says that we will be provided in Jannah fruits. But these are not like the fruits of this world. When you see them, they look similar. But when you taste them, the taste is not the same. And the taste of the food in paradise never leaves your mouth. Sometimes you have a cup of tea. And the, the taste of tea remains on your tongue and you don't want to eat after that because you want to keep savoring the flavor. Sometimes you eat dark chocolate. The bitterness of dark chocolate stays on your tongue. You don't want to eat anything afterwards. Maybe you want more dark chocolate because you want to keep the taste. But the taste of food in Jannah does not leave. It remains. You continue to benefit from the enjoyment of its taste and the pleasure of its flavor. And the drink of paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that in paradise there will be rivers that we can drink from. Who can quote me the ayah? Mm -hmm. فِيهَا أَنْهَارٌ مِنْ مَاءٍ آه مثل الجنة تفضل لبن The only masjid I can do these questions is in Masjid Furqan. Because, mashallah, half of the Somaliun are half of the Kitabillah. May Allah make us of them. Mathalu al allati wa'id al Allah says the example of the paradise which has been promised for the righteous. Fiha anharun min ma'in ghayri asin. In there is water. Ghayri asin. So water is neither salty nor sweet, perfect to taste. And rivers of milk. The problem with milk is it expires very quickly. But the milk of paradise, its taste never changes. And rivers of alcohol. But this alcohol does not intoxicate you. It does not make you woozy. It does not make you drunk. It does not make you confused. In fact, it increases your clarity. And rivers of pure honey. Drink as you wish. Drink as you wish and enjoy as you wish. You restricted yourself in this worldly life. You abided when Allah told you don't drink, you didn't drink. When Allah told you don't eat this, you didn't eat this. And you waited for the day in which there was no restrictions. And here it has come. And what of the spouses of paradise? What of the women of paradise and the men of paradise? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes us in the Quran. The beautiful women of paradise. They are like hidden jewels, hidden pearls. What a reward for what they used to do. In this world, one of the things that we pain to hear and we feel annoyed and disturbed to hear is when people talk about things that are not important, when people waste our time. But over there in paradise, there is no waste time talk. There is no talk that is useless. لا يسمعون فيها لغوا ولا تأثيما in paradise, there is no talk that is hurtful, no backbiting, no gossip, no insulting, no cursing. People only speak good. <laughs> only the words of peace are mentioned. What if you end up in one of the highest levels of paradise, but your son and your daughter and your grandparents are in the bottom layer of paradise? What happens then? Wouldn't you like for them to be your neighbor? Wouldn't you like for them to spend time with you in Jannah, 
in the same floor without for you having to take a spaceship down to the bottom floor of Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in the Quran. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believe. وَاتَّبَعَتْهُمْ ذُرِّيَّتُهُمْ بِإِيمَانٍ أَلْحَقْنَا بِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ And whoever in their family, parents or children or grandchildren, whoever has iman, they will be upgraded to your class. وَمَا أَلَتْنَاهُمْ مِنْ عَمَلِهِمْ مِنْ شَيْءٍ And none of your deeds will be taken away from you. You know sometimes, I don't know if anybody has ever happened. It's never happened to me. When you buy an economy class ticket and they tell you you've been upgraded to business class and this one six hour flight in business class, you feel like you are the king of the world. You put your feet up, you recline your chair. Even when you shouldn't be reclining your chair, you have reclined your chair. You are ordering everything from the menu. Yes? You are juicing every moment of this business class because you, did, you know you didn't deserve to be there. You, are, you got upgraded. Well, it never happened to me. But in Jannah, if you are in the business class of Jannah and you have relatives, dhuriyah, grandparents, grandchildren, family, friends who are in a, somewhere else in Jannah, Allah upgrades them. The only condition is they have to have iman. If they didn't have iman, they wouldn't be in Jannah. And so, so many people will get bumped up to first class, to business class, to enjoy the company of the prophets, solely by association. And some scholars mention it's not just family, it's even those who you associated with closely in this life. Your friends, your teachers, your students, your companions. And this is why Allah mentions in the Quran, those you were close with in this world, you will be with on the day of judgment. الْأَخِلَّاءُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بَعْضُهُمْ لِبَعْضٍ عَدُوٌ إِلَّا الْمُتَّقِينَ The closest of friends, الْخِلَّة, the most beloved people to each other, on the day of judgment, they will be enemies. Your best buddy, your best friend, your closest comrade on the day of judgment, it will disown you, except the righteous in Jannah. They will, be, they will not be enemies to each other. And this is why when the Prophet ﷺ Somebody asked him, when is the hour? Mata sa'a. Tell me what time is the day of judgment. Next week, 8 p.m., tell me what time is the day of judgment. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam asked him, mada adatta laha? Rather, what have you prepared for it? The man said, nothing. Illa an yuhibbu allaha wa rasoolah. I just, one thing I have prepared, I love Allah and his messenger. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, al mar'u ma'a man ahab. You will be with the one you love. You will get upgraded with the one you love. But is that love sincere? Is that love genuine? Or is that love because of some benefit in this world? Really, who do we love? Who are the people we look up to? Who are the people who we crave to be in the company of? Look around them today. The people you spend time with in the evenings. The people you ring after work. The people who you look forward to chilling with. Because on the day of judgment, you will be with them as well. Al mar'u ma'aman ahab. Everybody is with the person that they love. We talked about food, we talked about the drink, we talked about the company, we talked about the age of the people in Jannah, so many things. But who can tell me what is the greatest thing to look forward to in Jannah? To see Allah. To see Allah. You know, somebody came to me a few weeks ago. Two, a young man and a young woman, they wanted to get married. And they have never seen each other before. They met on Instagram. Today this is very common, mashallah. They meet on TikTok, they meet on Instagram. They see some pictures. How much Photoshop was applied to these pictures, only Allah knows. So they meet, they message each other, then they want to get married. I asked him, did you see her? No, I never saw her. But I really want to marry her. Why do you want to marry her? Because we chatted. And the more we spoke, the more I wanted to marry her. The more she talked to me, the more I wanted to marry her. We spoke on the phone. The more I heard her voice, the ev even more my, my, my desire to see her was even more. I cannot wait for the day to see her. This is a, a simple example from this worldly life. 
But when it comes to our Creator, we heard about Him, right? He was described to us, right? He spoke to us in the Quran, right? The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam informed us about Him. But the more we learn about Him, the more we can't wait, the more we are in suspense for that moment in which we will meet Him. Man kana yarju liqa Allah. Whoever desires the meeting with Allah. That meeting is coming. And he's the all hearing, the all knowing. And whoever struggles for Allah's sake, they're doing it for their own selves. Allah is not in need of the world. In a hadith which authenticity is disputed, the Prophet ﷺ mentions that while the people of paradise are chilling, they're sitting down, they're eating, they're drinking, they hear a voice calling them. And this voice asks them to look. And as they look, the veil is lifted and they see their Lord. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, they hear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala saying Salaam, greeting them with greetings of peace. Salamun qawlam min Rabbir Rahim, Greetings of peace from a merciful Lord. We don't know how we will see him. We don't know how we will perceive him. But it is enough that Allah has promised us Faces on that day will be bright Looking at the Almighty There are so many people in this life that we look forward to meeting And when we meet them A celebrity, a big sheikh Fulan ibn Fulan crosses your path You say, wow, he touched me He smiled at me He met me He liked my status You feel so excited and yet, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who gave us our heartbeats, the one who gave us this oxygen that we breathe, the one who sent us the messengers and the books and created this bewildering universe, the oceans and the trees and the peppers and the foods, the wonders of this universe. And if there was nothing in paradise except to meet our creator, is that not enough as a motivation for us? The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is sitting with his companions and he says to them, and they see the full moon in the sky. The full moon, recently there was a super moon. I don't know if you guys saw it. The super moon, it is double in size as the normal moon. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says to his companions, Innakum satarawna rabbakum yawm al qiyamah. You are all going to see your Lord on the day of judgment. Kama tarawna al qamara lilat al badri. Just as you see this full moon with your eyes, you will never get bored of seeing him. You will never get tired of seeing him. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, one of his most frequent duas was, O oh Allah, grant me لَذَّةً نَظَرِ إِلَىٰ وَجْهِكَ Grant me the pleasure of seeing you. وَالشَّوْقَ إِلَىٰ لِقَائِكَ And the craving to meet you. Make me desire to meet you. And look forward to meeting you. In a hadith it is mentioned that as the believers are enjoying in paradise and they are wondering how on earth they have achieved and received what they receive in paradise. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to them, do you want to know what is more than what you have gotten? And they say, how can there be more? How can there be more than what we have received? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you will get my pleasure. And you will never receive my displeasure. Allah mentions this in the Quran. Of all the pleasures of paradise. To be, to have the pleasure of Allah. That is the greatest of all achievements. وَاللَّهُ رَؤُوفٌ بِالْعِبَادِ And Allah is gentle with His slaves. How many a night we recite the words of Allah 
and we wait. If you love the words of Allah being recited, wait till you meet the one that revealed them. If you love anybody, any human being in the creation of Allah, wait till you meet their creator. If you enjoy the food and drink and shelter that Allah has given you and it fills you with love for him, wait till you meet your maker. Because there's nothing in paradise more beautiful that we should have more longing for than the meeting with the Almighty. And we should make dua for it as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would. Allahumma inni as'aluka ladhata nadhari ila wajhik wa shawqa ila liqaik. And after we describe the beauties of paradise and what is waiting for us there, there is one last point to mention. Is it easy to get there? They say no pain, no shawarma, no gain. They say no pain, no gain. And it's the same for paradise. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say about Jannah? Just as you are filled with desire and longing to enjoy those moments in Jannah, Allah says, أَمْ حَسِبَتُمْ أَن تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةِ Did you think you would just be given a free entry pass to paradise? وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ خَلَوْ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ And you didn't go through the difficulties of those before you. مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالضَّرَّاءُ they were faced with challenges and trials. Wazulzilu, and they were shook. They were physically shook. Hatta yaqul al Rasulu al Ladina amanu ma'ahu mata nasrullah. Until the Messenger himself and the believers around him exclaimed, When is Allah going to help us? They were shook and tested and broken to the level that they said, when is Allah going to get us out of this situation? And then Allah responds, No, the victory of Allah is near. And so this world is filled with tests. And this route to paradise is filled with tribulation and difficulty. But we have to stay steadfast. There are so many people in this world who work 24 hours a day. They don't sleep, they don't eat, they sacrifice everything. Why? For some paycheck, for some money, some profit that they're going to go to the Bahamas on holiday with. And we have this ultimate Bahamas, Al Jannah, this ultimate holiday that is waiting for us. Is that not enough reason for us to sweat and bleed and tear and get through the tough days of this world. So every time you lie in bed and you feel exhausted, remember the peace and the enjoyment of paradise. Every time in this world you eat something you don't like, remember that there will come a time when everything you eat will be something you enjoy. Every time in this world you're in trouble with your wife or your husband or your parents or your family. Remember, there will come a time in paradise in which there will be no hatred in our hearts for each other. In this world, when you feel down, when you feel downtrodden, when you're on the brink of giving up, remember that there is nothing in this world as painful as one moment in Jahannam. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, a person will be brought on the Day of Judgment. And in this world, they enjoyed everything. Just imagine those people who you see on, you know, on YouTube with the biggest palaces in this world. They enjoyed everything. Even their showers were the size of our houses. And when they taste one moment in Jahannam, they will say, Ya Rabbi, O oh Allah, ma dhuqtu na'iman qat. I never experienced anything good in my life. One moment in Jahannam. How many moments of difficulty we experience in this life? And yet on the Day of Judgment, one moment in paradise will erase all of the pain of this life. We should not be short-sighted. We have a long-term goal in mind. We see people around us fighting. 
compromising, scamming each other to get a few pennies and a few pounds in this world. But as believers, all these pennies and pounds don't matter to us because there is something else that we are searching for, something else that we are seeking, something else that we are looking forward to. And so the description of Jannah and the reminder of its paradise and its pleasures and the time that we will spend with the messengers and the time that we will inshallah spend with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be a motivation for us to, put, to take the duvet off at Fajr time. And as salah times get late and early and close and far, to persist. Because what did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Quran? لِمِثْلِ هَذَا فَلْيَعْمَلِ الْعَامِلُونَ If you know what paradise is, then you better work hard for it. هذا وصلوا وسلموا على من أمرتم بالصلاة عليه صلى الله عليه وسلم May Allah make us of those who meet the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم in paradise and who drink from his hand and who get to spend time eating the fruits of paradise and spend time enjoying the enjoyments of paradise May Allah allow us to be of those that meet him and not those who are flung off the sirat into the depths of the fire May Allah make us of those who love for his sake and meet for his sake so that we gather for his sake in Jannat in Naim. Wa sallallahumma wa sallimu barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.